Hello everyone, this is G and I'm back again with a new video, and I'm in a secret location, the J-O-B. Don't tell nobody they're looking for me. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I wanted to use my little Raphael plushie today, plushie is my favorite Ninja Turtle, given the topic that I'm going to be discussing today, hopefully briefly, and by briefly I mean at least 30 minutes, <laughs> which is being a tomboy and what it is to be a tomboy and is being a tomboy a bad thing so the reason I'm making a video about this is because apparently Daisy Ridley who most famously or infamously if you are a Star Wars fan plays the character of Rey in the uh, Disney Star Wars trilogy and the Disney Star Wars films said in a GQ uh, interview, a GQ, British, British GQ, I should say, British GQ uh, magazine that in 2017, she would have, des uh, she described herself as a little tomboy, as a sassy little tomboy in interviews, but uh, that mm -hmm. two years on, nearly three years on, she now would not use that term. Now, I saw some articles from the Telegraph and others saying that she was saying the, that, that the word is sexist. Now, I read the uh, uh, GQ article, at least as much of it as I could. A lot of it was just about Star Wars and I was uninterested. But I did find the part where she talks about describing herself as a tomboy and how she's come to dislike the term. But I did not find any reference to sexist or sexism or her saying that the term is sexist. Uh, I even did a word search in the document just to make sure I didn't overlook it. So I can't find any proof that she said that the word is sexist. That being said, she did say that she took issue with it. And well, I take issue with her taking issue with it, especially since she seems to be taking issue with it without really thinking about it, in my personal opinion. So I would like to just give you all my personal opinion about what it is to be a tomboy since I am a lifelong died in the wool tomboy so first let me read the quote that I got from the GQ uh, article itself so so this is what she says as regards the term tomboy it reads and again this is her speaking I now have an issue with the word tomboy why has there got to be a boy in it I was like hold on you're saying a little girl is actually like a boy because she likes to be active? In terms of energy, I, I would say I do have a strong masculine energy as well as a feminine. I, but I was a girl. I am one. So that seems to be her the crux of her argument or her issue with the word is that it has the word boy in it. First of all, this term from what I was able to learn uh, from a quick Google search has been around since at least the 1500s, the mid 1500s. And from what I read, it used to, it was originally used to describe the behavior of a rowdy, rambunctious, rude boy. And then over time, it came to uh, be the definition that we sort of have now, which is when a girl behaves like a boy, right? Especially a, a rowdy, rambunctious one. So first of all, the term was originally describing more a behavior, a certain type of behavior found uh, in these young men than necessarily a gender or one gender sort of acting like the other. That part came in uh, much later. And even then, when somebody calls a girl a tomboy, it's again, usually in, in, in reference to the fact that she likes, you know, rowdy, masculine stuff. And I can attest to that. I, I, I've, I've always had an interest in, in comics, video games, pro wrestling, right? And that stuff tends to be very uh, rowdy, especially pro wrestling, some would say lowbrow, right? So I do believe there is a, a truth to the term, but its original definition was always more about a certain pattern of, of behavior than necessarily a gender. Two, she says that uh, that she was questioning the, I, the idea of saying that a little girl is behaving like a boy because she likes to be active. 
No. At least in my experience, being a tomboy is not about being active. I was an active kid. I was active in my childhood, in my teen years, and for a good chunk of my uh, young adulthood. It isn't about being active. It's about the type of activity. If a young girl, for example, is active in general fitness, if she does yoga, if she does running, right, or if she does dancing or ballet or ice skating or things of that nature, people will probably think of her as more feminine because those type of activities are either considered unisex, such as running, or they're considered much more feminine, ballet, gymnastics, ice skating, dance, so on, so on, and so forth. A young girl who, for example, is active by playing basketball or fencing, as I was, or taking martial arts, as I wanted to do as a little kid and sadly uh, never quite had the opportunity and wasn't allowed to, right? She's going to be seen more as a tomboy if, if those are her activities, if she's playing team sports, if she's getting into rowdy, physical, especially painful stuff, again, like martial arts, fighting, right? That's a level of pain, right? Most, uh, most sports that are, I would say, seen as more feminine don't focus on you physically assaulting your opponent, right? Yet, when you look at more... Uh, masculine sports like pro wrestling, fighting of any type, boxing, uh, football, right? There is this emphasis on combativeness, which generally speaking is not as encouraged in women as it is in men. That's the point. It is an interest that is more common to men. So when women d uh, display this interest, it's going to be seen or rather, she's going to be seen as a tomboy because she's displaying interest in something that most people like her, most girls, would not be interested in. That's the point. It's more masculine activities, and it's a woman showing ardent interest in these things, just like, you know, a, a man, for example, who wants to be a ballet dancer or who wants to be a figure skater, right? He's going to to be referred to as very different things because he is a man in a, in a space where you don't find a lot of men. I will acknowledge that he no doubt will face more ostracism for wanting to do something quote unquote girly than a woman will uh, receive for wanting to do something quote unquote masculine. And I do think that's that's wrong, right? We shouldn't be ostracized or made fun of just because our interests don't fall into the norm. So I strongly dis disagree with that. You know, don't shame people just because their interests are not what uh, society would deem normal, whatever in the world that is. So there is that. So uh, uh, there is that. It isn't about... Um, Activity. Activity, just being active, is not what makes a girl a tomboy. It's her interest. I am a dyed in the wool tomboy. What makes me a tomboy is the fact that I played basketball and I fenced and I wrecked my, my knees doing that and I don't regret a single day of it. What makes me a tomboy is the fact that I've played video games all of my life. What makes me a tomboy is that for a woman, I have a fairly masculine personality. Now, is that all I am? Of course not. There's much more to me than that. But being a tomboy is a large part of my personal identity. Uh, even to the point when I was a kid, I would not wear dresses or skirts or anything like that for the majority of my childhood. I wore one because I was forced to, to, to do so at six, pitched a fit, didn't wear, wear one again until my early 20s. So that's how much it, it was to me, right? So, again, I'm a tomboy. I never really grew out of it the way many other uh, girls do. And I never quite fused the masculine and the feminine the way a lot of women do. So then there's another one where she says that uh, she has a strong masculine energy as well as a feminine, which, again, 
many tomboys do. Many tomboys, as they grow up and grow older, and they become more uh, comfortable in their own skin, and especially if, if, if they find themselves, you know, falling in love and attracted to people, you know, just that, that experience of blooming and growing up, you start to just feel better about yourself, hopefully. And so you can embrace the more feminine and sensual elements of, of yourself. But that's not necessarily going to happen to every single tomboy, right? Some girls, some tomboys uh, become very girly. Some sort of fuse the two and you kind of get the sexy tomboy uh, archetype. And then there are some like me who've always been more on the masculine side and never really grew up out of it. It just is what it is. It isn't about... But well, I'm not gonna say it isn't about masculine and 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 feminine energies, but how do I put it? There's no I, I see no no issue with the uh, the uh, term. So I don't know. I <laughs> I really can't formulate a thought there. So let me just move on. So then she says, uh, "But I was a girl. I am one." Okay, again. I'm not saying this is true of every tomboy, but uh, many tomboys don't have an issue with their gender. They may have an issue with gender identity and expression. Again, you know, uh, eschewing traditional femininity for uh, the more rugged, masculine, or casual looks of like, you know, jeans and a t-shirt and that type of thing, which is exactly how I dressed as a child and for a good chunk of my life. And even how I dress when, whenever I don't have to like be at work or something, you know, I'll, I'll throw in jeans and a t-shirt and that's it. I'm out. I don't really dress up all that much unless I have to. So at least in my experience and, and the experience of many other tomboys I've known in life, it's never been an issue of, oh, I'm conflicted about my gender. It was always more of, I'm not a girly girl and I don't want to be made to be one. I don't wear dresses and, and cute skirts and all that. I don't wear heels. To this day, I don't wear heels. I can't walk in them. <laughs> so there's no point in me wearing them. But anyway, that in my experience was the issue. I didn't know too many who were conflicted about their actual physical gender. In fact, if anything, when you're a tomboy and you're growing up and your body is developing faster than your brain, right, Developing a very feminine body, right, a very female form, when your brain hasn't caught up to it yet, is actually quite, um, quite an experience. Let's just put it that way. I was not accustomed or ready for the attention I received at only four, 14 year, years old because I looked like an 18-year-old college student. <laughs> so it was weird. It was very, very weird. So... Uh, there's that. So, yeah. I don't, again, I don't quite see her hangups about it. And the funny thing is that if you look at the GQ article where it goes on forever in a day, but if you look at the images in the article, she's dressed up like, like a tomboy. She's dressed in denim and she's dressed in uh, um, a wife beater. Is that term still acceptable? You know, the tank top. Let's, let's just use tank top. For, for you, YouTube shuts me down. Okay, I'm not advocating for for domestic violence. It's just a term. Don't get your panties in a, in a in a twist. Okay, don't get your knickers in a twist. Knickers, not, not the other term. This video is so gonna get pulled. But anyway, um, yeah, she's she's wearing denim. She's got she's cut her hair, and in one picture, she's got her hair styled so that. It resembles like a short haircut. It's not actually short, but the way it's styled and piled on her head um, is very, uh, again, it makes it look like she has a much shorter haircut than she really does. And there's one image where she's got this quite nice, in my opinion, leather jacket on and these like, you know, uh, uh, J Daisy Dukes and um, the, uh, the uh, white cotton tank top. And she's not wearing a bra. I'm like, girl. How are you going to say that you don't like the word tomboy? By your own words, you have an issue with it. But then you're going to dress totally like a tomboy. 
they're going to totally play into that stereotype of how tomboys, you know, dress in jeans and t-shirts and leather jackets, right? You're basically dressing like, like, um, what's her face? Ruby Rose. So how are you going to say that you, that, that you take issue with the word, but then totally play up to the visual stereotype of a tomboy? I don't understand it. And then... If you read the article, she's swearing, and I mean using heavy swear words, F-bombs, and other things. Again, swearing is something that is generally discouraged uh, in women, right? It's not seen as ladylike. So again, how are you going to take issue with the word tomboy and say that, that or rather complain about a little girl uh, being seen as a little boy because of, of her interests and her activities when you're basically proving the the stereotype and the, and the different in the definition right, you're dressing in a in a somewhat masculine fashion, right? You're speaking in a fairly coarse, in some would say masculine way, using heavy profanity, and yet you're going to complain about the term's definition while simultaneously living up to the term's definition. I don't understand this. I don't, I don't get it. And I want to be clear. I don't think that Daisy means harm or that she's trying to be disrespectful or anything. But I do think that she didn't quite think this out when she made this statement. Because let's just f focus on, say, Star Wars, right, for a moment. If the term tomboy is now a bad thing... That would mean that characters who are tomboys are now problematic in some fashion. So, does that mean that the character of Mara Jade Skywalker, who is a beloved figure uh, from the uh, uh, extended universe, is she now a problematic character? Because I would think that, you know, an assassin and the former uh, 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 Hand of the Emperor and all this other stuff would be considered a tomboy. Or what about the character of uh, Gina Solo? I think that's her name, right? Gina? Gina Solo? Right? She becomes a Jedi Knight. In fact, Luke Luke re refers to her as like the, like the Sword of the Jedi or something to that effect. I, I looked it up very uh, briefly. So, does that make her a, a, a problematic character now? She's a she's a engineer, or at least has a talent for it, similar to her, to her father Han. So, does that make her a problematic character if the term is now problematic for some reason? What about uh, Leia her herself, right? Authoritative, uh, in, you know, one of the most iconic moments in the series and probably in all of uh, American pop media is uh, her firing a blaster, right? That was seen as so subversive back in the 1970s when the film was uh, released. But again, very very um, tough-talking, authoritative, getting in Han's face, insulting him and all this other stuff, right? That's very unladylike to many people. Is she now a problematic character? Because she displayed these more typically masculine traits and most importantly what about the character of Ray herself right scavenger living alone right leading a resistance becoming a master swordsman despite having no storyline reason for the town she has right wouldn't this be considered being a tomboy? That's my biggest issue with, with Daisy's comments here. I think she didn't think <laughs> about what she was saying and just the gravity of it and just how far it reaches. Right? What about the character of uh, uh, Cara Dune? Right? She's been in the news recently. There's been some... A debate about whether her fighting the fighting the uh, Mandalorian to uh, a draw uh, is uh, if it makes sense or if it doesn't doesn't make the character SJW whatever she's supposed to be a warrior right 
experienced war vet. Right, definitely a tomboy. Anybody who, any woman who was in the military, uh, is, is a is a tomboy. Maybe maybe not just a tomboy, but if you're a woman in the armed services, you a tomboy. Okay, that's just not a place you are gonna find many women because many women are not attracted to that, right? Violence and the pressure and all that other stuff. It's just not a scene for most girls. And that's not being judgmental. That's just being honest, right? So you're a tomboy. But anyway, um, again, the, the, the character of Kara herself. Um, again, is she now a problematic character? Is she a bad character? Is she a bad example of a woman? Are all these Star Wars women that I have... Uh, sorry, this, that, I, that I have... Uh, sorry, just lost my place for a second. All these Star Wars women that I have mentioned, are they now bad examples of women? Are they problematic examples of women because they are what you would call tomboys? Or let's go to my favorite mode of entertainment, or at least one of them, pro wrestling. You know who the biggest uh, wrestler, the, the biggest draw, I should say, right, for an active professional wrestler in WWE is right now, not just for men or women, just in general, who the biggest star is, Becky Lynch. You know what Becky's gimmick is? Brawling, tough, Irish, leather jacket wearing tomboy, which is pretty much just herself, but meaner. <laughs> but still, that's the gimmick. That's the gimmick to the point where she, where, where she calls herself the man. And yet it's over like hotcakes. People can't get enough of her. Her merch is top selling, right? Everybody wants Becky because that type of, of persona exudes strength and toughness and people respect that. In fact, the reason why she was even able to uh, sort of transition into that character is because um, I think it was last year, last November, uh, there was a uh, something went went wrong during a, a a stage brawl, and another female wrestler legitimately punched her in the nose, punched her in the nose, broke her nose, broke like her or her or clavicle, and gave her a concussion and everything. So it was legit injuries. That was not a fake punch. That was a real punch, and it really hurt her. But she stood there, took the punch. And then just basically laughed it off. Right in the middle of the segment, she's standing there with the, with her nose bloodied, her 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 mouth and lower jaw covered in blood, the top of her shirt covered in blood, grinning like a fool, and and, and it it drove the fans crazy because now it showed this lady is freaking tough, and we love her for it. Another one in particular. Uh, for my pro wrestling example, I would say, again, all female pro wrestlers, I think, fall into it too. But like, like the two biggest examples that I can think of are Becky and probably Lacey Evans. For those who are not familiar with her, uh, she's a former Marine who, in the wrestling ring, she plays this, um, this uh, sassy, southern belle, very feminine, girly character. But if you look at her social media... Um, and, 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 and she shows stuff where she's sort of like out of character, like when she's with her family and everything, you see that she's still very much a tomboy, right? No makeup, t-shirts, <laughs> jeans, or like, uh, uh, sweats or whatever, right? She's still very much a tomboy. Keep in mind, she's married, got a kid, definite, you know, country f farm girl type, but she's still a tomboy. And she makes it work, and that's what makes her likable, right? There is this 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 toughness, this legitimate toughness about her that people respect and admire. So when she glams it up and 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 she plays like like the whole sexy pinup girl type of thing with the uh, sassy uh, 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 Southern Belle thing, people like it. People enjoy it, right? Being a tomboy doesn't necessarily mean that you that you can't be feminine at all. 
right? Some will be more feminine, some will be less. But it doesn't mean that you can't be, be at, at all feminine, nor does it mean that you're 100% masculine. We're people, tomboys are people. We have layers, we have layers, right? We are dynamic. But anyway, I've just been rambling for about 25 minutes now. See, I told you it would take about a half hour. But in short, uh, I really don't see the problem uh, with the term. I don't believe it's sexist or uh, in some way degrading because it has the word boy in it. It's a term from the, from the 1500s that still exists today. There's nothing wrong with being a tomboy. In whatever way you are a tomboy, whether you're the rough and rowdy type who doesn't really dress up all girly like I am, whether you sort of balance the two like many tomboys do when they hit adulthood, or whether, you know, you're very girly about it or you were a tomboy and then, and then you became a girly girl, okay, fine, cool. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with having masculine interest. There's nothing wrong with having feminine and feminine interest, and believe it or not, they can all exist in the same person. You can like fashion, and you can like a good fight, right? You can you can wear a, a, a lace glove and throw one hell of a right hook. They don't have to be uh, these two separate things. They have to be be at odds uh, uh, with each other. So the one thing I will agree with with Daisy on is that yeah, you can have a strong masculine masculine energy and a strong feminine ener- energy. But I think that when she, as an actress, especially one playing a tomboy character, doing an interview where she's playing up the 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 tomboy visuals, says that she takes an issue with the word. I think she's whether she realizes or realizes it or not, a being hypocritical. And B is sort of damning, right? Damning tomboy uh, characters and figures in media. And as a tomboy, uh, that's not what, what we need, right? I'm a tomboy, and yet I'm one of the biggest, well, I shouldn't say biggest. That would be probably be me being egotistical. But I am a tomboy, but if you've seen any of of my videos, you know, I will go right to bat for, uh, for uh, femininity and for more feminine characters because guess what? They're valid too. That's the thing. It used to be years ago that like femininity was like praised and all this stuff and it was, and, and it was being a tomboy that was seen as being like abnormal and was like, <sighs> get away, something's wrong with you. Now it feels like that we're going in the reverse and no. It shouldn't be that way. There's nothing wrong with being masculine. There's nothing wrong with being feminine. And there's nothing wrong with having elements of the two exist in the same person. And because people are dynamic and change, there's nothing wrong with it vacillating throughout your life. There's going to be times when, for whatever reason, maybe you're growing up, maybe you've fallen in love, maybe you've fallen out of love, whatever it is that you play up your masculine elements or you play down your your masculine elements you play up the feminine and play down the uh, the uh, f- feminine stuff that shouldn't be an issue like this word keep becoming issues and this is what causes people in my opinion to have complexes now there there's the possibility I'm not going to say for certain but now there's the possibility of you know young girls and even young boys who like the character of Ray and who hear the actress come out and say, well, I think the word tomboy is, is, is bad because they're saying that, uh, that uh, a little girl shouldn't be uh, treated like, like, like a little boy just because she's active. And it's like, well, what if she wants to be active like the boys are? What if she wants to play uh, basketball and fence or play soccer or do karate or anything else why why give her the false impression that these things are bad just because you take issue with an old antiquated word that's the thing that's the thing
I just don't think she really um, thought this out. So hopefully next time when she talks about it, she either won't talk about it or will give a little more thought to it. But anyway, um, that's my 30-minute ramble. Uh, so let me know in the comments uh, what uh, you think. And I will see you all around in the next one. Have a good day, night, and wherever you are and whatever you're uh, doing, be safe and have fun. See you around. Bye.